Is it the right time to buy? Let's wait for a while and see how it goes. Sounds familiar? When was the last time that you nearly committed to a property purchase and then pulled back because you felt that it was not the right time, even though you're financially ready? Be frank to yourself and ask whether that decision was based on a comprehensive knowledge of the market, or was it simply a decision based on your gut feel that you have no basis of backing up with numbers? In this video, I hope to furnish you with the critical facts so that you can judge whether it is still worth the wait. There are basically three key trends to watch in 2024, and they all revolve around supply and demand. Primarily, demand could be vastly elevated once interest rate starts to fall, and I will show you some charts that may offer you more insights. And for those of us who keep thinking that there is an oversupply of new homes for sale, please continue watching because your opinion may change after this video. There are only three directions that borrowing costs will evolve from now. Either it continues to go up, or it has peaked and will stay flat at current high levels, or perhaps it will start to ease down. Interest rates here are largely driven by global market movements, especially in the U.S. The Federal Reserve is expected to pivot towards interest rates cut in 2024. This move would bring relief to Singaporeans through lower mortgage rates. It is important to note that while the U.S. uses interest rates to fight inflation, Singapore uses exchange rates. Note that as interest rates fall, the yield for T-bills and Singapore saving bonds will also reduce in tandem, thus making such alternative investment channels less attractive. The prospects of long-term capital appreciation of Singapore real estate are just too attractive to be ignored, as history has repeatedly proven over time. Now let's take a look at some charts. Other than the first two fearful quarters when COVID was first discovered, notice that as interest rates drop, demand spikes and property prices increase. Well, you may ask, why is it that even when interest rates increase, property prices still retain its steady climb upwards? We do not see any drastic fire sale that could have happened in some other countries because there are already prudent measures that had been put in place. These measures include the strict LTV ratio and TDSR criteria to make sure that property buyers are not over leveraged and have the financial strength to withstand fluctuations in the market. Another important reason is due to the low supply of inventory in the market, which I will elaborate shortly. So even when the developers have a limited five-year time frame to finish selling each project, the market demand is strong enough to absorb it, and there is no need for developers to drop prices to avoid hefty penalties. So with regards to interest rate trends, once interest rate starts to drop, demand is likely to spike, and you will see even more buyers entering the entire spectrum of the real estate market. My question to you is, would sellers wait until you are ready and drop their prices? Or will sellers and developers continue to hold on to their asking prices and perhaps increase prices when demand spikes later on? Knowing what's likely to happen, do you want to get ahead before the next wave comes in? Or do you want to be like the rest who only take action after everyone else does so? I guess as a smart investor who decides based on facts, the answer is obvious. Next, let's take a closer look at the supply of new homes. By adjusting the supply of new homes in the market, the government is able to control the market forces so that we do not see wild fluctuations in prices. Sometimes, you need to read beyond the newspaper's headlines to understand the market better. It was reported in December 2023 that the government will be releasing new sites that can yield a total of around 5,450 private residential units for first half of 2024. That works out to be around 5.6% more than what was released in second half of 2023 GLS program. However, if buying demand is what the government is trying to address, it's important to note that the percentage increase is actually much lesser. In fact, it is just around 1% or 50 units, because we need to exclude the planned supply of 515 long-stay service departments that are not to be sold in the market. So please do not jump into conclusions when you see headlines like these. So the next question is, why do we see the government releasing new land sites for sale in recent years? One of the main reasons is because it is picking up the slack in the end block market, which has largely softened since 2023, especially after the infamous increase of ABSD to 60% for foreigners. Imagine you're a foreigner owning a property, and after selling under the collective sale of your current development, 
you will need to pay 60% additional buyer's stamp duty for your next replacement home. Who in the right mind would agree to an in-block exercise? Hence, realistically, if there is a fair number of foreigners owning and staying in a project, especially in the CCR area, the chances of in-block is almost nil if the ABSD is staying at current level. Hence, when the supply of sites from private sector drops, the government has to actively work on the GLS program to ensure a healthy flow of supply in the pipeline for the coming years. But note, when the government releases a land for sale, the new homes are not being put up in the market immediately for sale. Remember, there is always a supply lag of at least one year because there is a tender process and the developers need about one year to plan and get the necessary approvals before they can launch the projects for sale. So if you look at the list on the screen, notice that many of the 2021 GLS sites are only launched for sale in 2023 and eventually only ready for occupation around 2027. Likewise, those 2022 GLS sites are only launching in 2024 and are eventually ready for occupation only in 2028 or beyond. That's why if you understand this lag, the low unsold supply situation now is not going to be resolved simply by the government announcing new GLS sites for sale. This low supply factor is going to stay for a number of years still. How about cooling measures like the one implemented in April 2023? Look, cooling measures are nothing new in Singapore. Thanks to the creative, brilliant minds behind these measures, they have been in place for the past decade. We have now enough historical data to show the impact of cooling measures to understand how the market reacts. Typically, if you notice from the chart, after each cooling measure, the market was uncertain on how to respond, and we saw prices easing for around two quarters before the market started to get used to it and rebound. So take note of the blue line, which represents the property price index. Once the market gets used to each cooling measure, the prices continue on its uptrend to the next level. I recall when we conducted our consumer seminar in Q2 2023, we acknowledged that prices did ease 0.2% compared to Q1, but we also anticipated prices to rise going forward. True enough, in Q3 and Q4 2023, we saw prices go up. In fact, for Q4 2023, the price increase was more than three times that of Q3. So ladies and gentlemen, is it worth the wait? I have seen friends who were financially ready initially one year ago, but because of the lack of time and knowledge of the market, they dragged on their decision and eventually was priced out of the area that they were interested in. It is not worth it. Look, I am not advocating that prices will keep going up forever. Yes, there could be ups and downs like any investment. But real estate is not something that you buy today and sell the next month. It is a long-term investment as a hedge against inflation and as a tool for capital preservation and appreciation in the long run. We have seen from history that the long-term trend has always been pointing upwards. Next, let's talk about land prices. Land prices have a direct impact on the eventual selling price to consumers. Looking at the trend line since 2020, the average land prices are up around 30%, when you look at the average land prices in 2020 versus that of 2023. The key is that we should not be too concerned about minor fluctuations in prices tendered, but look at the overall trend of the land prices. We know the mainstream media likes to sensationalize stories whenever there is a dip in land bids. Now, it is also important to note about the development charge, or what is now known as land betterment charge. Land betterment charges are adjusted upwards whenever the land prices move up. So these add to the costs of land purchase as well. The recent closing in November 2023 saw interesting price bids. For example, in Clemente Avenue 1, the land was sold for $1,250 PSF PPR. This is a new benchmark for Clemente. I had discussed this in one of my previous videos that elaborated more on some of these new benchmarks. One of my previous videos also talked about GFA definition harmonization and how it affects land prices after 1st of June 2023. Essentially, developers will lose between 5 to 6% in sellable area. These various factors add to the costs of a project development. Developers would have to control their bids for land in order to maintain prices at a level that are acceptable for the consumers. Thus, do not assume that because developers are bidding land less aggressively than previous parcels nearby,
property prices are coming down. This is a misconception. In fact, for certain locations such as the Clementi site we just mentioned, developers are confident of the demand and are still ready to establish new benchmarks in their land bids. So at an estimated $2,400 to $2,500 per square foot eventual launch price for Clementi, it will be interesting to see how that optimism would turn out when the projects are launched early next year. But we know developers have done their maths thoroughly and are confident that the market is able to accept the new benchmark. Is $2,400 to $2,500 per square foot attainable for the mass market segment? The fact is that at Jurong Lake District, this mark has already been achieved. So the more important question to ask is what are the average prices for OCR new homes right now? Perhaps around $2,100 PSF plus minus. Do you want to wait till prices hit $2,400? Or should you contact me now and study the options available and do something about it? Remember, a $300 PSF difference could easily amount to two to $300,000 difference. In one of my previous videos, I had also mentioned about Morgan Stanley's 2017 prediction of Singapore property prices doubling by 2030. Now, when you look at how property prices have evolved, you notice that the prediction is turning out to be well on track. Look, I know these are harsh facts that you're staring at right now. If you still refuse to believe that mass market homes will be hitting around $2,500 PSF in 2025 or 2026, you could possibly miss the boat. At the current level of existing new homes at $2,100 per square foot, there are still very good choices available. Please do not hesitate to contact me as I am well equipped with all the latest updates and figures direct from developer. Most of the numbers you see from phishing sites online may not be accurate. So please get in touch with me directly. For those of us who are still not convinced, let me give you another example at Toa Payo at City Fringe. As I had mentioned in one of my previous videos, at a land bid price of 1,360 PSF PPR, the future launch price is estimated to hover around 2,600 to 2,700 PSF. Is this price range attainable for City Fringe? In fact, it has already been established over at Grand Dunman near Dakota MRT, which is selling very well. The Arcadia at Boon Kang has also crossed $2,600 PSF. Similarly, at Pine Grove, we probably would be looking at launch prices at around $2,500 to $2,600 PSF. Would this estimate make neighboring Pine Tree Hill attractive in comparison? Again, are you still waiting? Is it worth the wait? Please get in touch for the latest numbers. This chart shows Morgan Stanley's 2017 prediction for RCR prices doubling by 2030. Again, when you look at the figures right now, the prediction is well on track. Now, when OCR and RCR prices are hitting those levels that I just mentioned, what's going to happen to CCR, the core central region? You have to understand that the average premium of CCR homes over RCR was around 36%. The narrowing premium now means that CCR homes are undervalued and has the potential to rise. If City Fringe is going to cross 3,000 PSF in a few years' time, how can it be possible that a core central region home still remains at current levels of 3,200 to 3,300 PSF? In fact, for prime CCR homes, 3,600 to 3,800 PSF has already been achieved and with some ultra-luxury homes beyond 5,000 PSF. Again, Morgan Stanley's 2017 prediction of the CCR prices are well on track. I have been very active in the CCR since 2005 in both the resale and new launches and would be able to help you zoom in to potential homes. I believe the core central region is about time for repricing. I have presented clear facts and numbers that are pretty much like a crystal ball into the near future. I know some of you are still not able to accept the reality of the market. While you may remain skeptical on how the market will progress, the fact is, it doesn't wait for you. Many of my clients were once strangers like you before they reached out to me on my handphone to embark on their next journey. Our brief online encounter today could eventually turn into a meaningful experience. So please press that WhatsApp button and drop me a note. Visit singaporeproperty.tv to check out some of my clients' testimonials and explore some excellent choices. My name is PK So from Hutton's and I sincerely look forward to serving you soon. 
If you like this video, please like and share with someone whom you think might benefit. Thank you.